Hi beautiful, welcome to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be ranking every single Natasha Denona midi palette from worst to best. I believe I have every single one of the Natasha Denona palettes in the midi size. Midi palettes meaning the ones that retail for $68, they used to retail for $65. They come with 15 different shades like this one here. And Natasha has now launched a total of 9 of them. I happen to have them all. I've done videos with each and every one of these palettes here on my channel. I usually get them as soon as they release because they are my favorite size palette to buy from Natasha Denona definitely the best price and it being a 15 shade palette it has a really good amount of shades that you can choose from every time as you guys know I love Natasha Denona's eyeshadow formula it is one of my favorites to review like I was saying I'm a little scatterbrained I have made videos with each and every single one of these palettes I have done like initial review videos when they come out and then I also have a five looks one palette video with each and every one of these so needless to say that while I am ranking them from worst to best I absolutely love every single one of these there's not such thing as worst because like none of these are bad they're all good but I love ranking eyeshadow palettes on my level of excitement for them and I know that you guys like watching these videos too if you're new to my channel and you like this type of content I love making it so please don't forget to subscribe before you leave and with that said let's go ahead and get started so let's begin with the worst midi palette from Natasha Denona and to me, that one is this one right here, the Natasha Denona Love Palette. Mind you, like I said, I love every single one of these, but we're here for a rankings video, right? So here is the outside packaging and the color story of this one. As you can see, it's got some neutrals, some cool tones, some warm shades. It's got a lot of pink in it because it is a palette that came out for Valentine's Day a few years ago. and like for the season if you are into pink eyeshadow looks it is a beautiful palette but i personally don't love to do overly pinky eyeshadow looks myself so it's a palette that i have not reached for in a very very long time something else i don't love about this palette is the red shades like so and hard i'm not usually a huge fan of shades like those and then we have these purples here which if i remember correctly i personally didn't love the performance of them in particular this color dream here i was very excited about it and it's okay but i just wished it performed even better so the addition of all of the reasons i just explained to you are the reason that this is my least favorite from the midi palettes from natasha denona other than that i do love the packaging of all of these and i do like the natasha denona formulas i feel like i could maybe come into this palette for like specific shades but i never do and it as a whole i'm just not overly impressed with anymore anyways i did do a five looks one palette with this one as i mentioned i'll put the picture up on the screen so if you have this palette and you want some inspiration with it definitely check out that video but i personally just have not reached for it for a very long time maybe i need to challenge myself to do so <laughs> so the love palette from natasha denona stands at number nine and at number eight i have a palette that is a fan favorite a lot of people love this one okay but i don't and that is the retro palette right here take a look at the outside packaging which i love and then here is what it looks like on the inside the main reason that i don't love this palette is because i feel like it's borderline too cool toned for me you know what it might not actually be the fact that it's cool toned because i do love cool toned shades i think the issue i have is that shades like these right here on me look a little bit brucey <laughs> i think that's the issue i actually have with this one and that i just discovered it shades like these on my skin tone at least look like bruises and so i don't find it flattering on me the main shades i do love about this palette are these shades right here on the right because they're a bit more on the neutral side rather than cool toned so that kind of discards half of the palette for me that i'm just not as in love with i did a five looks one palette with this one as well where i created some looks that i did really like but at the end of the day it comes down to whether or not i'm reaching for it on a daily basis and this is just not a palette that i reach for 
all that much and when I think of it I just think of like the shades that I'm not like overly impressed with with this one however now that I know exactly why I don't like it meaning the brucey shades maybe I could just find a way to work around those um, so that I can get some use out of this one because it is Natasha Denona and I do love her formulas and I think I should use it more I do love the outside packaging of this one a lot it's this really beautiful nude rosy shade so yes even though I know that this is a lot of people's favorite um, those are the reasons that this one is just not mine <laughs> um, and it stands in the eighth spots at number seven I have a palette that got very mixed reviews I feel like a lot of people aren't a fan of this one yet it's not my least favorite in my collection and that is the Zendo palette right here it has kind of a metallic orange face to it but the camera really isn't showing it that well anyways here's what the inside of this one looks like it's got a very kind of stark difference between the two sides of the palette this one's very like cool tone green right here and then you have a lot of really warm shades on this side one of the main reasons i love this palette is this shade down here called yama because it is a dual chrome shade that mixes the warmth and the cool tone so this one even though like on the screen it kind of looks green it has orangey gold shades in it and it also has shades that are more on the green side and so my favorite looks with this palette always have this shade in the middle because i can combine the greens with the warm shades and just pop that shade in the middle as like a perfect transition and it looks really beautiful of course i did a review video with this one as well and a five looks one palette that i really enjoyed doing and it's one of the reasons that this palette is one that i like a lot because i was able to create some really stunning looks with it in that video and ever since i have been a fan of combining warmer orangey shades with like teal minty colors i feel like it's a very very flattering and so this is the palette at number seven Okay, my sixth spot is, I believe, the first ever midi palette from Natasha Denona. And that is this one right here, the Sunrise palette. I believe this was the first one that came out in this size. It came out during the summertime, I remember, because I remember thinking that this was a perfect summer palette, and it honestly is. First of all, I am weak for, like, yellow shades on the crease of my eye, and this one has not one, but, like, three warm shades you can put on the crease of the eye and they look so beautiful it has some pinks in it that are not like that brucey color i actually do enjoy putting these types of pink colors on my eyelid also a burgundy shade right here not too brucey either it's got some fun golds and a couple of duochrome shades that i feel like make this palette very very special so overall i do really enjoy this color story i loved when this palette came out because it started something okay it began what now is my midi eyeshadow palette collection from natasha denona and it was one of the first times where like natasha denona palettes were a bit more accessible because up until that point she was launching palettes that were in the 120 9 130 price point she had those very expensive like 250 dollar palettes that i could never dream of getting myself and so she started launching these smaller ones with like smaller pans and the same amount of shades that her bigger palettes have and this is the sweet spot right here this is perfection um and i hope that she continues to grow my collection with new releases of this size i mean it's been like three years so by now we know and expect this size palette to come out but i'm very excited that she decided to downsize her palettes and make them more accessible you know anyways absolutely love this one here it is a perfect summertime palette and another one that i actually reach for much more at number five i have a very colorful palette that came out just last year during the springtime and that is the pastel palette from Natasha Denona. First of all, the packaging is cotton candy dreams, okay? Absolutely love the matte exterior of this one. And once you open it, this right here is what you get. A whole bunch of really stunning pastel shades with the exception of Bora here, which is a bit of a darker one. And it is perfect to combine with the rest of the lighter pastel matte shades this palette has an incredible selection of shimmers and mattes and really colorful 
colors that are still wearable on the eyes because they're very light. I truly enjoyed the five looks one palette I created with this pastel palette because every single time I did a color combination with this one I felt like a fairy and this is um, the only like fully pastel palette I've been able to create a bunch of different looks with in which I feel comfortable with every single one of them and I don't have to spend a ton of time trying to build and blend and then things disappear like no this is really good quality for a pastel palette pastels are tricky to do and I honestly just love this one so this is my fifth favorite and the only reason it's not like higher up towards the front is because it's not a color story that I wear every day, but it is beautiful and the perfect spring palette, of course. At number four, I have a palette that was like my number one for a very long time, but I think my taste in eyeshadow maybe has changed a little bit, and that is the bronze palette right here from Natasha Denona. Once you open this one, here is the inside. So a palette like this one is obviously really nice and wearable because this is a color story that you can wear on a daily basis. You can create really nice soft looks with this one that are wearable in a business environment or you can um, glam things up with it, make things a little bit smokier, a little bit more glimmery shimmery and um, have a really nice fun glamorous look as well of course i created a five looks one palette with this one and in that video i remember a lot of people saying every look looks the same but whenever you're working with a color story that is kind of monochromatic because it is a kind of monochromatic color story you will have looks that end up looking similar to one another i however can tell the difference between my five looks so whatever <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, absolutely love the formulas in here. They are rich, they are creamy, they are pigmented, they blend like an absolute dream. And for a long time, these were the colors that I wanted to go for on a daily basis. So this was my number one favorite for a very long time. And for some reason, it is now fourth. Although I will say that the three palettes that are ahead of this one are newer so maybe that's why but also no i'll explain when i get to number two anyways the bronze palette one of my absolute favorite midi palettes from natasha denona i highly recommend it i love it and let's move on to number three at number three i have the newest midi palette and that is this right here the natasha denona retro glam palette this is another one of those palettes that has a really stunning color story that combines warmer peachy shades in this case with like olivey green minty colors this palette is absolute perfection and it is a palette that even though it kind of looks like you might have the shades in here is actually a very different color story from anything else natasha denona has launched and honestly it's different enough from anything else in my collection, period. I forgot to give you the close-up, but here is the outside packaging, which is really nice and different. Um, and then once you open it, here is what the shades look like. I'm obsessed with the looks that you can create with a palette like this because a lot of the shades are so nice and soft. And so this is a very wearable palette. If you're someone who only uses nude shades on their eyes and it's very afraid of color, but maybe you want to dabble into color a little bit, I feel like a palette like this one would be the perfect way because you still have your comfortable nude shades that you can use, but you can just grab for a green or grab for a peachy shade just to switch things up a little bit and get your feet wet when it comes to using a bit more color in your eyeshadow. This palette is glamorous, it is beautiful. I had a ton of fun creating a five looks one palette with this one. I really enjoyed combining the neutrals with the colors. I enjoyed combining the peaches with the more olive toned shades as well. And as you can see, it's become one of my favorite Natasha Denona midi palettes, it being at number three out of nine. So let's move on to number two. And I'm actually wearing mattes from number two today. All of the mattes around my shimmer are from the Natasha Denona Glam Palette. I feel like this is definitely a lot of people's favorites when it comes to Natasha Denona Midi Palettes. And it is a really nice, monochromatic, neutral to cool toned color story. One thing I really love about this one, which was a little 
tricky when creating a five looks one palette but i do like the idea anyways is that in this one instead of the shades having different names she named the shades the places where they go on the eye so it's very easy if you want to create looks with this one to just be like okay what do i put in the transition and you go for the transition shade what do i put on the crease and you go for the crease shade and so on and so forth anyways last time i did a rankings video i believe that i put the bronze palette over this one like i loved this one more and that's why i was saying my makeup taste has changed because now I like this one more than the bronze palette. This past year and a half or so, I have been much more into like cooler toned shades and I love combining cool tones with warm tones as you can see on my eyes today. Anyways, this palette is fabulous. It is the perfect palette for every day. You can also smoke it up a bit and use it at nighttime. It has a really beautiful formula and a really stunning monochromatic color story. Here's the five looks one palette I created with this one, which I absolutely loved. And if you need inspiration on different ways to use this palette, you can always reference that video. Although as I was telling you before, she has literally written where to use each shadow right underneath it, which I think is really clever. And it makes this palette that much more easy to use. Anyways, this was number two. And let's move on to my number one midi palette from Natasha Denona. If you've been keeping track, you know that at number one, I have this one right here. This is the My Dream Palette from Natasha, which came out just a few months ago. I really love the outside packaging of this one. I love the matte canvas with the satin looking paint splotches. I think it's clever and it looks really nice and artistic. If you've followed my channel for a long time, you know I die for some burgundy and well, this palette has a lot of what I love, okay? So here is the inside of my favorite Natasha Denona Midi palette right here. And as you can see, it has really stunning burgundy shades right here that don't look brucey on my eyes. She included a multi-chrome shade in this palette, which I absolutely love. It's really nice and shiny. And then you have a contrasting warmer side to this palette as well that is very wearable and you can create very glamorous looks with. It has a black you can darken up everything with. It has a few different transition colors. It is perfection in a palette and my favorite from her midi size range in my collection. I absolutely love creating looks for this one. Of course, it was a total blast. One of my favorite color stories Natasha Denona has ever launched on an eyeshadow palette and I just think that colors like these are very flattering on my skin, with my eye color, etc. And so, of course, this is a palette that I gravitate a lot towards and I'm very happy that she released. The entire My Dream collection from Natasha Denona is also my dream type of makeup. So I've been obsessing over every single piece in that collection since it came out. This palette quickly became my favorite midi palette from Natasha Denona and I have had a blast playing with it. My main complaint when it comes to Natasha Denona and her midi palette range is that I feel like we sometimes lack a bit of like metallicness to the shades, a bit of glitz. I love glittery shimmery formulas. I love metallics and a lot of the shimmers that she uses for these palettes are like, I don't want to say lackluster shimmers because there's not such a thing since she does have an incredible formula but I just wish that there was a little bit more glitz to them and that is just me and my personal preference. I know that a lot of people prefer shimmers that aren't as attention grabbing because they do want to use them to like go to work on a daily basis but if she could just give us one to two glitzy shades, like truly glitzy shades per palette that would be incredible and I would love her palettes so much more than I already do. So anyways, I really hope that you guys enjoyed this little rankings video. I've been wanting to rank my Natasha Denona midi palettes for a while and so I'm glad that I finally got to it. If you liked it, don't forget to please give it a thumbs up before you leave. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, please don't leave without subscribing. And if you're interested in any of the five looks one palette videos I mentioned in today's video, definitely check them out next. Anyways, I love you guys so, so much. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you back in the next video. Bye.